So how is it that I've been able to build all these businesses and become so successful, even though I have a chronic illness, I've been very sick, I've had many, many surgeries, and there are many times I'm in bed. Great topic to talk about. And I'll tell you what, today is a really great day for me to talk about this because I ain't feeling so good. So it's gonna be a real heart to heart. Welcome to The Fighting Entrepreneur. By the way, we're only a few episodes away. That's right, Fighting Entrepreneur goes bye-bye. And it'll be the Onyx Singal Show starting at the top of the year, top of the 2023, okay? Same right here, right this place. If you're watching or listening to us, wherever you are, it's just gonna flip over and hopefully you will send us tons of love and help us promote this. And then of course, onycpodcast.com to binge listen to all of our past episodes. I can't believe we'll be like four years. We're more than four years in. All the episodes will remain. The Fighting Entrepreneur will be archived and available to you forever, okay? Now let's talk about being sick. So before I start, I love you all ahead of time. And many of you are going to want to send me your doodads and your medical mysteries and your magic wands that I can wave over myself and magically become really good. I would just ask, I'm in a very good place right now. I'm getting some really good care. It's super holistic. And so please don't message me with the one magical pill that'll get me better. You know, the only reason I would probably not talk about the fact that I have an illness or that I'm sick half the time is probably just because I am so loved by you and I really love that, is that every time I do mention it, oh my God, I just get inundated with people that are like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, I know somebody here, I know somebody here, you gotta take this supplement, you gotta take that supplement, you gotta go see this doctor, you gotta go do this regimen, you gotta do this, and it's like, ah! Just stop, right? It's like, wow, like maybe you are right, maybe you are not, but yeah, there's a lot of things that go into whether I can do certain things or not. Or I do want to have a heart to heart today because people do ask me this a lot and people will pretend as if it's not difficult or that it's not hard. At this very moment, let me tell you what's going on, okay? So this moment right now, as I'm filming it, this is heart, this is true heart to heart right now. I'm just having a rough day. And why? But I don't know. Is this something I ate? Is this something I, I have no clue? Could be, you know, I started the day strong, came in, had a great morning, and then I could just tell, I could just tell my mood wasn't quite there. And I was, you know, if you've been sick long enough with a certain type of condition, you, you can just feel all the feelers. And I was like, hmm, something's not right. Part of my strategy of being so successful with such a severe illness, I backed off immediately. I listened to the cues. And so there was a couple of things I had to do today. Like I had to be on a two hour long interview on camera. So immediately I asked someone from my team to conduct that interview. Had another thing that was scheduled, I canceled that and I started to clear my schedule. I didn't cancel this podcast shoot for a couple of reasons. One, this will be shorter. Two, I actually felt, hmm, let me film this podcast when I'm not feeling well. I wanna open up, I want you to see it. I want you to feel it. I'm not gonna give you a ton of energy. I'm gonna give you who I really am right now. So what do I have? I have a condition called Crohn's disease. Celiac, I have ulcerative colitis. Basically my gut is messed up. I've had it for 20 plus years. I've had over 10 surgeries. I've had resections. I've had a surgery that I got wheeled into where they said 50-50 if I would survive or not. I've been in the ICU for as much as three months. I've had many, many times where I have passed out from bleeding uh, internal. See, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it bad, okay? Now some of you are thinking, well, Anik, you gotta take better care of yourself. Well, duh, I know that, right? Thank you for your, your mind-blowing moment of cl clarity. But when we're kids, when I was younger, I wanted to be successful. Health be damned. Your body could take a lot more abuse too, so you give the abuse, not thinking about what it's gonna do to you 10, 20 years down the road. Now I'm very different, right? Like I said, and I'll go over, I have a five part structure I'm using to, to run my companies, even though I'm, I'm not always feeling great. And honestly, like, you know, today do I feel better than I did 10 years ago? It kind of changes. So in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. As my body changes, I'm kind of having to adapt and change and my medical regimens and the doctors I'm seeing and the natural stuff I'm doing, it's all kind of changing and evolving alongside of it. And the biggest thing is that I'm dealing with now is like, am I actually actively flaring Crohn's disease? No. My last surgery I had was in 2020. So I probably am not going to need any surgery for a long time. Hopefully never. But you know what happens is when you've had a certain medical illness for so long and the medications you've taken are so strong and the surgeries you've had have physically impacted your body's ability to intake certain nutrients and other things, you start to have side effects. You start to have all these other symptoms of other things that can sometimes even become more troubling than the disease itself. And that's probably where I would say I am right now. There are days where I'm just in a bad mood. Why? I have no idea. Chemically, something's going on, right? There are days where I'm just completely weak. There are days where I have not, I have zero appetite. I don't want to eat anything. There are days where I want to eat everything, 
right? It's just weird, but this is just is kind of the side effects of all of the stuff that's happened. So first and foremost, I just tell you, I don't tell you any of this so that you feel bad for me. Please, please don't. I don't look, I am who I am today because of what I am. So everything about me has created the person I am today. And for the most part, I love the person I am today. I'm proud of the person I am today. So this condition I have, if I could go back and talk to myself 20 years ago, would I have given myself some advice of things to do differently? Yes. Would I have listened to my own advice? No. I just know that's that's who I am. That's what I would have done. But yeah, could I go back and do things a little differently health-wise? Probably. In case you're wondering what I would do, sleep better, stress less, take the natural stuff, supplement the crap out of my body because I was missing on so much. Don't jump to the hard meds real quick. Do things like stop drinking. Like as a kid, I mean, as, not as a kid, I keep saying as a college, I, I didn't like, I was never like a binge drinker, but you could go to parties, you drink, like cut that out. Food allergies. I, I lived with the gluten allergy for a lot longer than I should have. Cut that out. But these are all things, man. I tell you, go to a kid in college and say, hey, no more gluten, no more dairy, no alcohol, nothing spicy. You know, like, whatever, dude, go away. So again, no regrets, but let's just address it. A lot of you listening, you may have health problems. One thing I do not allow my health to do is become an excuse to dictate what I can and cannot do in my life. I have traveled the world. I have built very successful businesses. I have a great personal life. I am a good son, a good husband, a good father. I like to think I'm a good boss. I do good by everybody. I do good by my word. I like to think I'm a good teacher. And so I've done everything. And so that's very important to me. I do not let something become a crutch of mine. And it is through these five things that I've been able to do that. Number one, very early on in my life, I understood the, the brilliance of building a team right? As a very young kid getting diagnosed with Crohn's disease, you immediately realize you need the right team of doctors, nutritionists. You know what? When I was in high school, I had to keep dropping out because I'd get so sick. So I needed to connect with my teachers at a different level. I needed to make sure my friends were a different type. They were all part of my team so that they could help support what I need. And I was never ashamed, never ashamed to ask for support or help. So number one is team. That has led me to where I am today and where I lean on my team. I tell you, this is a true story. I don't have my phone here with me, but this year, 2022, one of the most fascinating evolutions that I have had as an, as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a boss, as a CEO, as a businessman, is that 95% of my business is now by, I'm running it with my phone. I don't need a laptop. I don't need a desktop. I run it from my phone. Why am I able to do that? Because I have an amazing team. I have a team that I can send instructions to and I can review things and just give them loom videos and audio videos so team without the team there's no chance I have learned I have no chance I have any of the success I have and I have a team by the way that doesn't just professionally care about me but I have a team that loves me personally and I and that I, that means a lot to me you know today when I messaged the team and I said hey can someone please step up for me and take this interview because I'm not feeling well I had three people instantly say I'll do it I had a fourth person message me saying hey hope you feel better I know you you've always been there for me when I'm not well I'm here for you like I had love I had another member of the team message me immediately saying hey I hope you feel better real fast that's the love so have a team that's there for you professionally and personally and a team that you can trust so that was number one okay team number two delegate I delegate I trust I have a team that I trust so I delegate to them listen stress is my number one enemy and when I get stressed I get sick so I'm not gonna lie today a little stressed okay it's, it's been a rough couple days when i take on everything and i make it my responsibility and i want to do everything i get stressed so now i'm at a place where i get the instructions i give my thoughts and then i give to a team member and i trust that it'll get done if you don't have that then you have either of two issues either a you have the wrong team or b you've never tried it that's it you gotta be able to delegate though that's the number one thing people say how do you run multiple companies right now at this very moment Father, husband, son, I run multiple companies, I'm a coach to many people, and I have a personal life, and I'm not well, and I do all that at one time. Well, because I delegate about as much as I humanly can delegate. Number three, prioritize. I have said for the longest time that this seesaw culture of work-life balance is complete, excuse my language, and hopefully beep this out. This is not life. Life does not stay steady, even even Stevens. This is a complete BS. I don't know who the hell created this, but it was a lazy bum who does not want you to understand the truth of success. It doesn't stay like this. Look, if you were, here's what I believe about work-life balance. If you were to look at work-life balance across my entire life, I would hope that you would see even Stevens on the seesaw. However, that would be an average 
of many days and times and months where I was up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Look, today I'm not well, so my health gets prioritized. I cleared the schedule, canceled things that I thought would impact my health, and I prioritized. The seesaw tipped in favor of my health. But then there are other days where maybe my wife is not well, or my daughter is not well, or my mom is not well, and my seesaw tips in favor of supporting them. And then there are times where I got a launch coming up, something really important happening in the business, and the seesaw shifts. Yes, I communicate to my wife and to my family and to my friends saying, I will not be present for the next week or two. <gasps> yes, Sonic, yes, I do. And you know what? They don't mind because they know that when they need me, I shift the same seesaw in favor of them. So the ability for me to prioritize makes it so you think I'm doing a lot of things at the same time, but I'm actually not. So if I've got five companies under my belt right now, that does not mean that today, within the same hour, I'm managing five companies. No, today, I've actually been very focused on one particular project and company that is taking my focus, my priority, while the others are functioning and my priorities keep focusing, keep seesawing back and forth, back and forth. But when you look at a macro level, it looks like it's even Stevens because that's the average. So I prioritize so that I'm not thinking about 20 things at one time, but relatively thinking about two or three things. That's it. You just don't see it. But over a cross of a month, course of a quarter, course of a year, sure, I thought about 20 things. All right, number four, listen. I do listen to my body. Okay, I'll tell you what. I've had this condition now since, I don't know, 1999 or something. Most of my life. For the first, like, 20 of it, I thought I was at war with my body. Mind over matter. It was literally was my psyche against my physical. So when I'd get sick, I'd say, the hell with you. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do this. I wasn't in partnership with my body. You know, right now, it's like this. My wife comes up to me and says, hey, I'm not feeling well. Can you take the baby? Would I look at my wife and be like, the hell with that? It's your day. You take the baby. I'm not taking the baby. You suck it up and make it happen. No. Very few of us on this planet would ever do something as stupid and evil as that. That's what I did to my body every day. So you suck it up. Get up. Let's go. My body's like, please, I'm not well. I don't feel good. And shut up. Let's go. So the last like few years now, it's like, okay, it's my partner. Like it's not, like I'm not at odds or at war with my body. It's not mind over matter. It's mind with matter. We're one, right? So like today my body said, hey man, just not feeling it. And I said, okay, I listen, I listen to my body. Very important. And a lot of us don't. You're younger and you're listening to this. I'm telling you right now, my friend. You come back and listen to this when you're 39 like me and be like, dang it. Should have listened to him. That's one thing I would tell myself if I could go back in time. It's like, listen, just listen, man. All right, last but not least, P for passion. I love my life. I love what I do. I love the people in my life. I love all the people in my life that create problems for me, <laughs> even. I love how my business kicks my ass sometimes. I love the challenges. I love the wins, the losses. I love everything. I love the stress. That's right. I'm a masochist. I do though. It's growth. I love it. I'm passionate. However, the truth is earlier this year, I had fundamentally lost my passion for a lot of things going on in the business. I was starting to drag last year more than anything i started to feel it and that is when the stress and everything can compound but now today at this moment i'm probably under more professional stress than i've ever been in my life yet i am more optimistic happier and more encouraged than i ever because of the word passion i'm passionate about what i'm doing so if you're ill if you're sick and you're trying to achieve but you feel like you're dragging and you don't it's because you've lost your passion what are you passionate about i don't care what it is man if you're passionate about the violin go absorb yourself into the violin if you're passionate about video games just go absorb yourself into it and find you will find opportunity in there to be the best to do something that's effective and that's beneficial to the world in that passion and that's where you will thrive truth is days are hard times are tough truth is i gotta listen you gotta listen to your body truth is sometimes you gotta step back and do less but the truth also is you can have everything you can be successful you can have an amazing life even if you're sick and even if you're in bed sometimes i am a lot of times you just don't see it I work around it and i've gotten better and better at it even as i've begun to listen to my body i'm getting better at being successful than I was five to 10 years ago. And you can do it too. All right. Love you guys. All right. Listen, onicpodcast.com to listen to the rest. Hit like, hit 
Subscribe, thumbs up, blah, blah, blah. Tell people about it. Subscribe to this podcast, please. Onyx Singal show starting very soon. Can't wait to have our amazing guest join us for that. And as I always say, when life wishes you, stand straight, smile, and push it the heck back. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singal.